All right, so within this setting screen, there's things that we need to look at and think about and set, but we don't have to change them that often once they've been set. This is foundational stuff. But if you've never looked at these things, this might be a faulty foundation you're trying to build your Facebook on. So let's look at the general settings here. If I don't quite mention something, I'm skipping it because it's not that important for you to really look at. But uh, there's favorites. I already talked about favorites. Visibility. The page is active. People can see it. If you want to hide it, you can change its page visibility. You can put it back to unpublish. It won't delete anything. It'll just hide it. And then you can show it again. I suppose the reason you could do that is to kind of work on your site until it's ready. But I don't really see that done with Facebook. I see that done with a real website in WordPress and such. But for Facebook, it's like an ongoing thing. You don't really have to hide it while you're working on it. Just have it live. Here's a big one, though, the, the third one, visitor posts. At the moment, the cool thing about Facebook is that anyone can post things to your page. The bad thing about Facebook is that anyone can post anything to your page which means that anyone can put positive or negative things on your page and it goes onto your page automatically. I want that for people that are gonna praise me but I don't want that for people that are not going to praise me. So I recommend here, if you click Edit, you have these options. First of all, allow visitor to the page to publish a post, to make a comment on your post, on your page, and there is either yes or there is no. If you go down here to disable posts, then what happens is that disable posts will not let anyone post to your page. Maybe that's what you want. You don't want people to write nasty things on your page. However, I think that's the nuclear option. I think that's too far. I personally believe that social media, especially for a business, should be run as a dialogue, not a monologue. Now, remind me if I've said it in a previous class, but have I mentioned about the theory of dialogue versus monologue in social media? No? Okay, let's mention it now. Dialogue versus monologue, monologue in social media. Can you define for me, if you've heard of the word, what's a monologue? Let's break it down. What's mono? One. one. Monologue. Log is, I think, speech. One speech. One person talking. A monologue is me talking to you. My Facebook page talking to my customers. That's a monologue. I recommend to run your social media as a dialogue. So what's the opposite of a monologue? A dialogue back and forth. I recommend and I found it to be effective with clients to have a dialogue back and forth. I post something, the client posts something, and then the customer can reply to it and add to the conversation and maybe make a sale and such. And then the client replies back to the customer and it goes back and forth. You're building a, um, a rapport. And uh, in the full theory of marketing, well, that's part of the marketing funnel where you're discovering a potential customer going all the way through the funnel that you made a sale. But people have a hard time from that phase where they have not been really dealt with all the way to the part where they become a customer. So what I'm getting at here is recommendation is... use the dialogue strategy of social media. Let people be a part of things. Let people comment to reply, to share your content with other people. Have them be free advertising for you. If you're going to do that, however, which is the first box here, then I highly recommend activate review posts by other people before they're published to the page. Notice that's off. Any crazy person can write any crazy thing and it'll show up. With this one on, any crazy person can write any crazy thing, but it will not show up until you approve it. And you approve it up here up on the... Um, I, I think they put it up on the one of these screens here, the publishing tools, I think? One of these screens. The person's message will appear here before it appears on screen, and you can say approve it, or delete it, <coughs> ban that person because it's a spammer, you know, moderate 
what's going on. A lot of Facebook pages activate this and it's a monologue. It's just a person, it's just a business constantly doing the sell. Look at this product, buy this product, look at us, we're amazing, look at this. And it's never a dialogue where you see real people back and forth about interested in buying something because popularity breeds popularity. If I go to a bakery and I'm seeing these great pictures of, 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 of baked goods, but I'm seeing people writing, that was so tasty when I bought it last week, and someone else writing, I had, an, I had a great time at your bakery, or someone else writing, well, I had a little bit of a trouble, but thank you for fixing it. I'm uh, getting other people's opinion to affect my opinion, where then I buy something from them, perhaps. So activate this one, definitely. If you don't want to deal with any of that, you've got enough to do, just don't accept any comments. And then you don't have to deal with it. But then, personally and professionally, from our clients, this has worked out better. It's a little more work, but it does work out better. Allow people to upload a photo or a video or just text. That's up to you. And if you have it on, that's okay because you've got moderation turned on. So that picture that they've uploaded that is off topic will not show up until you approve it or delete it. If you made any changes here, make sure to save. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? That's been changed. You can turn it on and off whenever you want. And now probably depending on your page depending on what you chose, was it a company, was it a cause, etc. You may have different things than I do. I have one that is reviews. If you don't have that one, you, you don't have it. It's because you, you activated a different type of page. And that's not wrong or bad, it's just that you don't have the reviews ability. And mine is off. If I would like people to give me reviews, on my business page here, well, I can activate it. What's the difference between a review and a post? They will be shown on the site differently. If from on top over here, there's a certain box on the home page that will be about people's posts. There will be another box about people's reviews, marked as reviews. So conceptually they're different, but it's still a place for them your users to add something to your page. News feed audience and visibility, uh, this one, blah, 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 is off. This is one where I would recommend to turn it on. This is just another way to target your message. Earlier in the day, we had set up the general demographic of who you're trying to reach. This one is the ability for you to select on a po on a post by post basis who can see it says when you create a post you can choose which people see it by selecting all of that stuff again gender age etc you can also have the option to control who sees it on your pages timeline so it's off by default because we've already made that choice previously but if you then further want to target every single post you can get that ability we'll see later I'll turn it on just to see what it looks like a little later. Remember to save. This is the part about messages. Right now, people can contact my page privately. This is the part where I say, no, I don't want to do those private messages. I've got enough to worry about. It's on or off. This is related to the dialogue of social media. It's, again, more work, more effort. It could pay off because you're building a customer relationship to hopefully make that sale. So if you turn it off and someone has a problem or a question, they're ready to buy, but they have one more question and there's no way for them to contact you, they might not buy. If there is a way for them to contact you, there will be a button at the top. Send a message. And then hopefully you answer it satisfactorily and causes them to buy. Tagging ability, don't worry about that. Others tagging, don't worry country restrictions, that should make sense. Who can see this page? If you say, hide it from these locations, and you can't. Let's say you're selling some alcohol. 
and we can't sell alcohol in some nations, so exclude those nations, or vice versa. I won't change anything here, but this should make sense about who can or cannot see your page globally. Same thing, age restrictions. These ones should take over what we set previously on that page audience screen. This is a lower, more all-encompassing level. Page moderation and profanity filter are related. Uh, right now the page moderation is nothing here. Add words to block separated by commas and this says you can build a list of, of keywords that you're going to block if one of those keywords appears, it will automatically, automatically mark as spam. So this is related previously to the other one. If I've activated the other one about page moderation, this is then a bit of overkill because you're going to approve that message anyway. Here, if you put in, well, my bakery, um, you know, if some... I don't know, let's say herbicide. If anyone writes the word herbicide in their in their message on my on my page, it will automatically be marked as spam. But I can go retrieve it from the publishing tools screen. I can go retrieve it and say, well, actually that one shouldn't have been blocked. I'll let it go through. But if I put that keyword for a reason, most likely I didn't want that post to go through anyway. So this one, it's up to you to decide if you want to do any page moderation based on keywords or not. And then profanity filter, it's off. So anyone can write any, uh, people can write whatever the heck they want on your site. Uh, if you want stronger filters than that, we have medium and strong. What does that actually mean? Well, it says here a little question. Uh, Facebook determines what to block by using the most commonly reported words and phrases marked offensive by the community. So they're saying depending on the people that use Facebook and the people that have said that's a bad word, then this will apply. You can't tell it exactly what words, although you can go back up here and write as many of those bad words as you want there. So either or, it's up to you. Similar page suggestions, that's fine as is. We want that. We want my page to be suggested, which means, have you ever liked something on Facebook? And it tells you, if you like that, you might like this. If you like this toy store, you might like that toy store. That's what this is, and it's on. So if someone likes a bakery, it may suggest to them, you might also like Victor's Bakery. That's good, free advertising. Are you going to write your post in multiple languages? It's off. Again, this doesn't translate it for you, but this gives you the ability to write in multiple languages if you activate that. Comment ranking, that's fine as is. People can, you're going to post a picture, let's say. People are going to love it, they're going to write a comment. Then other people will see those comments, and people can like a person's comment. So the theory about that is that if three people write something and one of them is negative, someone could put, can give it a thumbs down and have it sort of like decrease in importance. And the comments that are good, in theory, people will give that a thumbs up and it will rise in importance to show the positivity. That's on by default. Let people comment or you know, give thumbs up to the good comments to have them go up. If you don't want that, you can turn it off, but that's valuable. It helps keep things positive. Content distribution, uh, this one's new to me. Videos uploaded to Facebook generally may be available to be downloaded on Facebook in some countries. If you check this, videos uploaded by you will not be made available for download on Facebook. Videos uploaded to Facebook generally may be available in some countries. Content distribution, okay. This seems to be saying that if you uploaded a video to Facebook, the default is someone could download your video. If you don't want that, 
you can turn that off. That's not foolproof, however, because if someone really wants to take something of yours from your Facebook, someone's going to find a way. Because behind the scenes of every single website is code. And if I know how to read this code, I could probably figure out how to take something from your page that I want. So unfortunately, really, anything that you put up online, if someone really wants it, could take it. Here's Merge Pages. We're making this page, and you might have an old version of a page. You want to take what you've already got on that other page and add it to this page. We can merge it. You can go through that process on your own. This is somewhat common in that someone creates um, multiple versions of a page on accident, perhaps. Well, we want to merge them all together so that we don't have redundant content. And after today, if you had made a, a page like this based on uh, based on what we're working with now, and you don't really want it, you can delete it. You can delete the page, and everything that you've created here will go away. Yes? Can you create a page like this with the same name as your page that you want to merge to? Or does it have to have a slightly different name? It needs to have a different name. Remember earlier when mine crashed, yeah. I tried to create the same page and it says, you already have that page. So I okay. created one with number two. And then when we merge it, we can we can sort that out. Okay. Question? Am I understanding on the blue bar up there that shows your notifications and your friend requests and things? That, I see things on mine that are those are my personal. Mm -hmm. The business, will it have little notifications across that page, messages, notifications, will it be little bubbles, number bubbles, or whatever? The want? notifications of the page will be under the notifications tab. And it will show up as a... Yes, there will be a number that appears next to it here. Okay. It won't be so detailed like this. You know, someone's wanting to chat with me here. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be as detailed. It'll have a number, and then when you click on it, it'll break it down to say, okay, well, here, here's the activity that, that's happening. But it has its own separate one that's your personal one there. Now, nowhere here is there something about upgrading a, an existing personal page to a Facebook page, is there? So, what we can do is, up here on Facebook search, how to convert personal um, profile to business page. And in the Facebook help system somewhere here, you're going to see, right, actually I should go directly to help first, help center. From the help center, I would look up that, how to upgrade, how to convert a personal one into a business one. Yes? So I've Googled this and read some of this. Um, my problem is that for my business, there are a total of four pages, separate pages. Three of them are linked together, like you go to one Facebook page and the two are a new chat mm -hmm. on that page, both personal, and then an outside separate. Well, you know, none of them business. So is really the only thing I can do is download the pictures off all four to the desktop, take the one with the most friends, merge it to a business which will turn the friends to life, and then start uploading. All the content will disappear, and then start uploading the pictures and start all over again. Since that sounds like a really unique case, that might be the best way, but I would confirm by going to the Facebook help system and contacting them. There is a way for us to contact them directly, and then they do respond. You see, I've got four responses from a Facebook rep. So I would, the best answer would be for me to tell you, ask them directly, because they, it sounds kind of unique there. So they might be able to fix it the best way. So you're going to see here, how can I convert my page? How do I convert my personal to a Facebook page? The answer will be there. You need to follow those steps. But 
if you're in that boat that you created a page a few years ago, but actually you created it as personal. And remember, the difference is that personal page gets friends and business page gets likes. You need to check the help system there how to convert it. Again, if I skipped something or didn't say too much about it, it's not that too important to look at. But any questions on this screen before we look at a couple more things? If you don't have it, then you don't have it. But look at that. Preferred page audience. Click on preferred page audience, and that's that little questionnaire we got when we first set this page up. I can go back to edit it. Again, if you don't have this, you, you don't have it. You might have a legacy version of Facebook that doesn't have this. If you still don't have this, I wouldn't worry too much about you missing this because we're going to target our content anyway based on that other setting and based on another concept we'll look at a little later. If you don't have this, maybe don't sweat it too much. But um, if you really want this, you most likely will have to create a new version of the page. And in mine, it says, based on what I've said here, it looks like I can reach about 185,000 people. That might be perfect for you know, a gene pool of customers that I could reach to sell my products to. A list of all of the people that have liked your page. Uh, should show up here. You have this data of who liked my page. And the point of that is that then you could go to the person's uh, personal page themselves and try to further make that sale or build the nurture that customer and so forth. Yes? If we like a business and our profile is up there, can we, I mean, if we set our profile to, uh, what's it called, private, they can't click on it and look at our information? Can we like a business page? Or can they hmm. still access our personal information and like check us out? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm leading towards that if you put it to private, it's private. However, I sort of have a memory that if you like anything, a like is public. So I'm not exactly sure which way to lean. We'd have to look it up, but I believe that if your page is private, should not be viewable because you've set it to private. Apps, um, not much to look at at the moment. You may have other things here, but these apps are like extra features that you can add. There, if you've taken, like, for example, the WordPress class, uh, an analog would be widgets. Uh, if you haven't taken the WordPress class, widgets or apps are like little extra features that you add to your Facebook. Have you been to a Facebook page that shows like, for example, a tab here for a map or another tab or a button here for some other feature? The built-in features of Facebook are, are these <coughs> listed here. But if you wanted something cool like a map or other things, that's an app. So if you have any apps activated, they'll be listed here. And if you want to add more apps, basically search them at the top here map app it'll then show you uh, apps where's apps apps right there it'll show you apps so okay I want to add the my travel app my travel map app to my page I need to click here and each one's a little different it's set up and all of that um, check the ratings and reviews and how good they are and downloads and all of that. So that apps screen will let you manage them all easily. And um, to add more apps, you need to search. When you search, make sure you're, you're looking at the apps filter. How many of you have heard of Instagram? Raise your hand. How many of you have an Instagram, personal or business? Okay. How many of you knew that Facebook bought Instagram? How many of you knew that they paid that they paid one billion dollars for it? Facebook paid 
I think a little bit more than a billion dollars for Facebook a few years ago, back when it was still a much smaller network. But apparently they had great vision. They saw that people would love Instagram. And actually, more people now use Instagram than use Twitter. Twitter is at about 320 million users globally. Instagram, in a, about the last month or two, just reached 500 million. So f half a billion people use Instagram. It's surpassed Twitter. And so um, I've been on Instagram since week one. Um, I've used Instagram since the beginning, which I think was 2011. And I remember when it was only when it was iPhone only. You had to have an iPhone to use Instagram. Then a year later or so, they opened it up for Android users, um, and then Windows Phone and so forth. So it's become bigger and bigger. And then eventually, Facebook bought them. And those of us using Instagram thought, well, that's over. You know, I don't use Facebook because I don't like Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And we thought, it's Facebook's taking over. They're going to change it and make it like Facebook. Game over. But actually, they left Facebook, they let, Facebook left Instagram alone, really. They, they let it grow and develop as the company had always been. And that was great. Until very recently. Until very recently, Facebook started to integrate more features like ads into, in, into Instagram. A few years ago there were no ads on Instagram. It was just people posting their stuff. Now there's ads. Just like there's ads on Twitter, ads on Facebook, ads on Pinterest, ads everywhere. LinkedIn everywhere. Except Google+. Plus. Google makes plenty of its money elsewhere. And so for a person, I don't like, for a personal account, I don't like that Facebook has bought Instagram. Now there's ads. As a business, I love that Facebook bought Instagram. Now there's ads. My ad could go on Instagram and reach an audience of half a billion people. This is a bit of a discussion that we can't quite get into at the moment, um, but there's a whole learn more system here. The short answer is that you are able to then reach more people. If people, people that are on Instagram most likely are there because they don't want to be on Facebook we can use the power of this integration of Facebook to reach those people. We will be talking about ads in general soon about Facebook. We, we have to. It's very valuable. And that'll lead into ads on Instagram. Featured... Um, here's the part where you can show who is behind this Facebook page if you want to. It's completely optional, but if you want to have me or you or whoever manages also be listed on the home page of your Facebook page, here's how you do it. And if you've liked uh, any pages, you can show those likes on your page, which that's sort of like cross-branding. You might have different Facebook pages that you've created with different content, and you kind of want to show that all of these Facebook pages are related. So you don't really have to do too much here. Page support. This is contact. Contact Facebook help. An activity log is a variation of the publishing tools. They might remove this at some point. Activity log is just another way to look at what you've published. Videos you've uploaded, any spam that's come in, questions that have been given, and so forth. It's just another way to look at the data. Yes? Are you talking about paid advertising? Yes. Yeah, the Facebook and Instagram, that's paid. That's paid. And we will, we will get to that soon. Uh, it is a valuable thing to think about. So that's a bunch of settings that we saw here. Um, any questions in general? Again, you set these and you don't really have to deal with them that much afterward, but it's important to look at them at least once to see what's there. And they add new features once in a while, so it's good to review them once in a while. So any questions on any of these settings? Let's go back to page. So click on the, the page button to take you back to the main page, the main home page here. If you look at the very top, the address of my current Facebook page is this, facebook.com slash victors-bakery-2-2. 
gibberish. Remember, there was a spot for you to add a nice short name. I really perhaps wanted simply Victor's Bakery. That was that screen we were at previously. I'll show you where to get back to that screen in, in a moment. So for this testing page, doesn't matter. But for a real page, it might matter what that name is up there. And unfortunately, the name that you want might have been taken. Facebook's been around 10 years. It's got one and a half billion users. Your name might have already been taken. You'll have to use a different name. The good news is that really the name of your page doesn't matter as much as the content of your page. The pictures and text and links that you've added. The content. That's always the case with any SEO. The content matters more than any tricks about when should I post. Um, you know, is my picture uh, big enough or any of those details. It's the content itself. Uh, if a person were to visit my page, they would see my branding, they could give me a like. Again, it's a page, not a, not a personal, so it's, there's no add friend, request friend, it's, it's a like. They could send me a message here. There might be more items here. Because, we, because this is our own page, under more, we have edit page info, we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, view my page as someone else. Right now I'm viewing it as me. How does it look like when someone else visits? We'll look at events and such later, suggest a page, invite friends. Well, if I have so many friends on Facebook, why don't I tell them, hey, friends, I've got a brand new business on Facebook. Give it a like. The thing about that is, people in my own company argue with me about this, where, we, where some say, this is very valuable the invite friends and suggest pages. Some say it's very valuable. I lean toward no. Because are you really going to build your business on the backs of your friends? And I might have mentioned it over for the other networks. Are you going to pester your friends again? Like my page. Like my page. I've got these products. Look at my products. Buy my products. They might work the first few times as a courtesy. But then are they really going to want to see your content and your newest product over and over and over. Maybe your friends will appreciate it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Doesn't hurt to try, but I personally don't think there's that much use to these. Because we're going to get an audience in a moment that really cares about your product. Just because you've got a friend on Facebook doesn't mean they really, really care about your product. So we'll focus on that audience in a moment. Other things, view insights, which is the same as insights, share, tell more people about it. Okay, so more stuff. We have add button. Add a button to get people to take an action from your page. Let's check that out a moment. Click add a button. We have a few actions here. People will visit the page, they will see a button, which you have some control over, but not every single possibility at the moment. They've been adding more. This used to be limited to maybe like five actions. Now there seems to be about 10 or 12. And so the possible actions that I have, contact us, and I can put here an address to my contact page, for example. It'll look like this on a website, it'll look like that on an iPhone, it'll look like this on an Android. These are these are what is known as a CTA, a call to action. Yes? Okay, so I see the button right here is the click now. Um, and that's like the little calendar and whatever. Uh, can, you, can you tweak it so like, um, no, unfortunately, whatever options are in the setup, that's what you're able to do. You don't have, if they don't allow something, then you're not going to be able to really do it. So whatever features you have, you can use.
there's a couple of notes here. Uh, go through all settings and review what works or not uh, on your home page. Set up set up a CTA, which is call to action button. That's what we're looking at right now. It's a CTA, a call to action. The call to action is something that convinces a person to do something. One call to action, the, the default one here that it showed was contact us. That is written in that way, contact us. There's not any customization there. I would love it for it to say reach out to us, but I can't. It's just contact us. The, all, the only thing I can do is add a link. How will they contact us? If this is in some sort of app which is kind of advanced, you can go in there. Again, I'm not going to deal with that one. The app is more complex. I can say, okay, well, um, send us an email, and then I put an email address. It will then allow people to send an email directly rather than jumping through one more hoop of the contact page. Call now. I can put a phone number here. So if they're on their Android or iPhone, there will be a button that says call now. You put your phone number there, they tap it, and it will automatically call. Can you do several of those, like have an email and a phone? No. 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 At the moment, only one call to action at a time. You can switch between them, but only one at a time. What else is here? Play a game, shop now. If you do shop now, again, send them off to some, some page. That's what I was saying earlier that I need to educate myself a little bit more about that because I'm starting to see some versions that have that feature, but all versions have this, which at the very least sends them off to your website where you have your shopping cart. So again, it, unless it lets you do something, you can't too much can't do too much with it, send a message, etc. So whatever makes sense to you, you should add the button when you can. You can change it whenever you want. Yes. Okay, so on the call one, call now button, uh, to infer like the Google um, voice number? Yes, that a Google voice number should work because it's a number people can call. Should work. Here's the part about send a message, instant replies, etc. Alright, so that's relatively new. Some accounts might not have that call to action button. Again, it might be a legacy version. I don't know if Facebook will eventually activate that for all businesses. Probably they will, but there might be so many that it hasn't reached yours yet. And the other way to get it much faster is to make a new page, but that could be complicated too. Let's look here on the left side under About. You see on the left of that home, about photos, etc. I had left mine to, ha to have reviews, so I've got a reviews screen. But um, let's look at home. I'm sorry, let's look at about. Here's a lot of information also that, that, is, in, that is important for you to review at least once in a while. Let's look at home. And here's right away category. Here's what we set up at the beginning of the day. If you set up the wrong one earlier, or if you set it up years ago, here's where you can go back to change it. And unfortunately, sometimes, again, depending on yours, it may be different from, from mine. If you, you don't see it until you hover, but if you hover over category, you get edit. Say, so, okay, well, actually, it's going to be something like uh, sports related, and it's going to be and sports event. There's my name. I can go in and change that. It'll then give you some do's and don'ts. Another personal one is that 
Personalize which one? Category? No, it's from their list and, and that's it. There's a lot of them, but not everything, unfortunately. So try to pick the one closest. We can't we can't personalize it further. You can't and you shouldn't because then it's going to be harder for people to to find you. Username. This is the spot here where you can create uh, the URL. So this is interesting. Now they're calling it usernames. They used to they used to call it. What do they call it? Facebook custom name or something. This is simply, well, what name, what short name do you want for Victor's Bakery? It's going to create a custom address. So if I'm trying to do Victor's Bakery isn't available. So what this will do is it'll create facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery123. Pages with usernames can also create custom URLs. If this is just a testing page, I would not, I would not claim your username yet. You're going to take it away from yourself if you really want to use it. But if you still have a gibberish name up here, that's how you get a nice short name. Start date. This can be set up about. Um, when was this page founded, opened? This is completely optional, up to you. It's just part of like the lore of your site, the lore of your of your page. And I can say, is this about the start date of my Facebook page or is it about my business? It doesn't say and it doesn't really matter. So I could say here under start date, I could say, you know, founded in in the year. 2006, whatever, and go down to the day, the month and the day. I have other options. Created, launched. I launched the website. I could put today's date, 2016, uh, July 27th. Can you tell us how to get to this thing? Try to, try to do this. Go back to your, to your main page here, and you should see on the left about. Let's see, start the address. Okay, address. The thing about address, before you fill this in, there's a little question here. When you change your address, it may take a few hours for the new information to appear. Also, if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check into your page using Facebook Places. So if you use this, what this is saying is, someone's got Facebook on their phone and they open up Facebook and they click the button about what's around me and it'll say Victor's Bakery is one mile down and then so they can get a map and go to Victor's Bakery and then they can click the button check in meaning I'm here I've checked in I'm at Victor's Bakery um, that's completely optional but the value of that again is to just gather more data my insights would show me the most popular time people are checking in is at 1 p.m. Knowing that could help me craft a post to be published at 12.55 that says, at lunch, make sure you use the coupon code SALE123. Because I know people are coming to my business at that time, they can take advantage of that by creating content that takes advantage of it. And this is going to be optional, but this will allow people to do that. You can enter hours of operation, always open for example, closed. Here's my short description where I can fill in those keywords. Long description where I have even more space, I think, how long is that one? There might not be a limit to it. I think last time I checked this there's just huge, you can write a lot. Again, I wouldn't write a whole essay here. I wouldn't fill this with paragraphs of content. People are not going to look at that about screen on your page for that long. They're going to look at what you've posted today and yesterday and tomorrow. Think about yourself. Last time you went to a Facebook page, how many of you went to the about page? Raise your hand. Okay. So very few people, but 
not a lot of people most likely are going to go there, so don't worry too much about filling this in very deeply, but it is valuable if you fill it with keywords. Backing up. Impressum. Most likely you are not going to need this, but the Impressum is an optional field where in some countries, such as Austria, Germany, Germany and Switzerland, a business needs to, re needs to explain who has ownership of this web presence. We don't need it in the US. But in these countries, they must have some sort of law that says, you know, when you see like a political ad, and at the bottom it says, paid for by the committee to elect John Smith. Well, who made that political ad? It was this political action committee. The impressum is related to that, but it applies to these nations. We're not, last time I checked, in any of those nations, so you might not need to fill this in. But if you're doing business in those pages, in those nations, you should probably fill that in. It's just a statement of ownership, like, you know, this page is property of whatever, paid for by whomever. 2,000 characters. Mission. This is just another spot for you to write more keywords and what your company is about. The mission of Victor's Bakery is to sell the most tasty and healthy baked goods and make your family feel great. Some keywords that people might search for. So we have founded, which I sort of think, well, what's the difference then between start date? I'm sure there's a subtle, dis subtle subtle difference, but I believe one of them shows up just as text and the other one's a date. Do you have any awards? Put that in. Products, this is not that powerful. You just enter your list of products. Cookies, cupcakes, right? keywords of what people could search for. There's a spot for a phone number. So there will be a spot for a phone number in the About screen, and if you want, you can make a call to action for a phone number, either or. So maybe you don't want to use your call to action button for the phone number because it will already be in the About page. But the reason you would put it on the call to action button is because you want it to be shown to people right away. There's a spot for an email, there's a spot for a website. Most likely none of you will need to deal with this official page item. This is that if you are building a page to sort of promote something else, here you're going to say that this is a page related to something else. So this is the official page of Justin Bieber. Most likely you will not need to do this. This is your page. You're the official page of your page. You're not the official page of some other page. All right, any questions on this about screen? Okay, let's go back to the uh, home screen of the page. We spent a lot of time talking about foundational things. Content-wise, we have some nuances, but it's whatever we've already talked about regarding Twitter and Google+, I would reiterate via about content, meaning on Twitter, we have the limit there of 140 characters, but we can add pictures. We can add up to four pictures. We can add links. We can add text, videos. I could do the same thing on Facebook. On Google+, I can share pictures. I can share links, etc. The nuance there is I usually want to share as collections or communities. Remember that. Here on Facebook, well, I can share these similar things, but let's look at some differences. I can share a status update, which is text. 
I have the ability to add a picture or a video, which is the same as if I clicked up here, photo or video, and I can add it in different ways. Okay, click photo, video, or I'll make an album or a carousel. It's just another way to show your image. Slideshow, another way to show it. This is three to five photos. Canvas. Now you can tell more immersive story by combining images and videos. Okay, so it's just another way to get people's attention. Maybe plain old text won't work. We have these other ways to, to go. What I'm going to say is make it your goal to share at least one of each of these at some point. Maybe one of these, like upload a photo today, and three days later try to upload a photo album. Three more days later try to do the carousel. Three more days the slideshow. The point is try to upload content to see what's effective. People always ask, what's the best time to post on Facebook? What's the best thing to post on Facebook? And you'll find thousands of articles that will give you an answer. And they're all right and they're all wrong. Because for some people, that answer works great. For some people, that answer doesn't work. The best answer that I can give you is you try a variety of tactics and topics and concepts. And Facebook itself, in the insights, will tell you the most popular time for you is at 4 p.m. on a Friday. So then you take advantage of that. And it'll tell you, when you created that canvas, you had 10 clicks on it. When you created the photo carousel, you had two clicks on it. So based on that, which one should I focus on more? Perhaps the canvas. So I can't tell you which is the best one. You try it out. You will see your audience, which is the best one. To do these, you know, you click and it's going to have a bunch of options to fill in. Do I want to make a square slideshow or rectangular one? One second between photos, five seconds, a fade. Do I want music? I want the electric coconut music. Sure. And then I add photos. Just another way to share, another way to get people's attention. We have so much to do, so many distractions. We need to try different things for attention. Depending on your page, mine shows that I can also add an offer, an event, a milestone, or a note. If you don't have these, you, you don't have them. It depends perhaps often on what you set on the about, what category you've set. You wouldn't really have an offer if you're, for example, you've set it to maybe a, a cause or a community. You don't have an offer there, perhaps. But what I have here with offer, this needs some setup. Uh, but what this is, is basically creating a coupon. A coupon that, that Facebook publishes for you and lets you manage. It's actually pretty cool. I, I like this. Not everyone would want to use this because, again, a coupon is great for the consumer, but not for you. You're losing a bit of money in the hopes of getting something in return. So is this something that's going to be in store? It'll be a percent off, percent off. How much? What's my title? Description? Add a photo? When does it expire? Will it be some sort of code? What about a barcode? This will create a barcode. Look at that. It'll create a little QR code if you want. Then someone scans it with their phone and then they get the discount. Terms and conditions. So, you know, use, use once per customer, per day, whatever terms you have. So it's a bit of a setup, not super complicated, and there's a little bubbles of help here. People will get this percentage taken off their total purchase. Maybe it's for an online version, so here's the spot where I put my address in. And what sort of deal am I giving? Get something for free. What's the title of that? Free PDF recipe. Free, free, free recipe PDF. Give our exclusive uh, favorite recipe guide. 
we have a limited amount of space to write something, but this is how it's coming together here. I'd want to add a picture to catch attention. Well, this means I have something created that I need to give away. It doesn't, it doesn't further help you create that thing. You have to have it. When does it expire? What's the coupon, etc.? So now that showed up on my page. If anyone searched Facebook free recipes, this could show up. If anyone is a fan of my page, they could see it. Remember those target audiences, they could see this. If I tell people at the restaurant, don't forget to follow us or like us on Facebook, they could see it. So I'm able to create different kinds of content. Notice I don't have offers over on Twitter. I also don't have uh, events on uh, on uh, Pinterest and such. This is another one that takes some setup. I won't really go into it, but here I can I can set up. Well, here's something that's happening. I'm going to upload a picture. When's it happening? Is it in the real world? All of this stuff to fill in. But it's just another way to build community. All of this is in service of you know really to be crass and bring it down. What's what? How can I use all these things to sell something? Now, you may not be selling something, you may be a nonprofit, you may be just wanting to show your art. Just take what I've said and apply it to what you are doing. How can I use this to further my online goals? And if I can't exactly tell you what to do here, I can't. I can't tell everyone what to do with one, you know, cohen of knowledge here to give to everyone. Everyone would need individualized help to say what might work best for you. Yes. Do you have any recommendations? There's really that I can see in my new reviews of this so far. There's nowhere really to put a price sheet that would go more on a website, correct? Or just in this there is. There is. You can go right here. It's not exactly named like that, but here it is. If you see Note, even though Note sounds like a little blurb, Note is Facebook's new ish blog system. And this gives us a place to write price sheet, a nice photo, and then as many lines and paragraphs as I want. Let me finish answering that by saying this. Let's check this one out. If you have this that under... Would disappear. It's not something that would stay on your website, like the call now button or the... Let me confirm that. There might be a way to, to pin it at the top, but at the very least, yes, it will be pushed down with more content. So if you do click the note, there's a spot to add a picture. We can add a text such as, you know, recipe guide write something. If I click there, I've got a little bit of formatting on the left, such as add a picture, add bullet points. As I'm writing something, I can also select it, make something bold, italics, and such. A little bit like Google+. Plus. Remember, we could do bold and italics on Google+. Plus. Here, it's much more visual. We needed to know the secret of what characters to type. But here, I can do bold, italic. I can even do links. So I can make that an active link. So this is like Facebook's own version of WordPress, to a very limited degree, in that it is Facebook's blogging feature. I can write anything I want here. Do a little bit of styling to it save it as a draft, and if I save it, it will um, be on my drafts screen. But if I publish it, um, if I publish it, it's, uh, it's a new item that I posted here, and if it's a lot of text, it will be see more. And there is your pin to the top. So at the corner of what you've posted, I can do it on this one as well, pin to top. So any new post will then get pushed down by a newer post. 
note, photo, canvas, whatever. Any new thing gets pushed down. If I want something to stay at the top first, and it's only one thing at a time really, I can set it to be pinned, and now whenever someone visits my page, this one will always be first. See, it's got the little pin. It doesn't look like a pin, but it's been pinned. Bookmark. So later on, I want something else pinned. That other one will take over, so be careful. Because if that one was two months old, it's going to push it down into two months. If I want to repin it, I need to go back through my feed or through my publishing tools and find that post again to pin it again. I can post things and thankfully, unlike Twitter, I can go back and edit it again. I made a mistake, I can go back and edit. You have some limitations of what you can edit, however. Change the date, so you know this was published today, but I can say it was published yesterday. Embed gives you the code, so you can copy this into an email. <coughs> copy and paste this into my WordPress site, I can show this post on some other website. Advanced settings. Hide from timeline. If I no longer want people to see it, I can hide it. And okay, it's gone. Well where did it go? It's in your publishing tools. Everything that you've that you've created is still going to be findable here under publishing tools. We'll do one more thing then we'll take a break. Um, I'm, uh, let's say, just to keep it simple, if I'm going to share some text, I could attach a photo to it. I could attach doing or an emotion. So if I click there, what are you doing? Watching TV. The point of that is just to show, again, more of a personal side with the customers. If I'm over here watching the DNC convention. I can attach that. The point of that is that then I'm trying to reach other people that are also doing the same thing. Let me show you here. So if I say what else I'm celebrating, a birthday. So anyone that has liked or had an interest in that could find my content as well. I could attach a location. That's to uh, that's to alert people of a location so that they can get driving directions. So if I'm saying something like uh, first annual, we're at the first annual. Bake off. Join us. And I have a location attached. Well, people will see that on their feed, and then they can click and, and get directions to where it's happening. Now it looks like there's a little glitch. I don't know if you see it or not. But I've got one, two, three, four. There's a fourth icon, which in my case is becoming invisible. That's supposed to be like a little target. If you see the target, good. If not, uh, there should be a button right there. Narrow the potential audience. This is exactly like that previous screen about who's going to care about my post. So I have already set it up on the previous screen those people are going to most likely see my post. But if I then want other people to see this one, I can go in here to start to target it to a different audience.
So now this post, whatever I write here, a picture, a video, an event, whatever, is going to really now start to be targeted and hopefully shown to more people that really care about it differently from the main page. Lastly, I'm writing something, and I have the button to publish it, and it'll go live right away. Next to it, the triangle, I have the ability to save as a draft. So I want to finish crafting this message later. I can save draft, and that'll be up on my publishing tools. It'll show me all my drafted posts to get back to it. I have back date and schedule. So backdate is, let's say, this is not used that often, but let's say I wanted to celebrate our company's one-year anniversary on Facebook. And I forgot to do it because I was busy at the shop. So I could write something here saying, our one-year anniversary, and we're happy to be here, and whatever. But I wanted to have the date of yesterday. I can backdate it. Again, not a lot of use cases for it, but you can play with those dates to fit whatever uh, agenda you want for it. And schedule. This is the part here where I can set up a variety of posts to automatically be sent out, where I'm not chained to the computer trying to keep on top of it. I can spend one day. I could spend, you know, one Friday morning, think of five things I want to write on Facebook and then schedule them. Something will be written right now at 8.45 and then I'll have something that will be published on Friday and then and so forth. If I do schedule a post like I'll do here, it will not automatically show up and I can retrieve it back on publishing tools scheduled. There it is. That's about to be published then. And I can go back in to um, To edit it or publish it now or remove it, reschedule it, delete it. So that's very useful. I would think about the value of scheduling. And I'm glad Facebook recently added something in addition to this that's very valuable. In the old days, you know, the ancient times of Facebook, one year ago, we would uh, share something like a coupon and the coupon was good for a weekend so they used it the weekend passed we kept adding stuff then a month later someone tries to use the coupon again because what they did was they scrolled back and back and back and back and found oh there's a coupon here let me use it from a month ago even though the page clearly says to be only used this weekend well Facebook added this new feature when you're scheduling, look at this. Distribution schedule, stop displaying it at a certain day and time. Start it today and stop it in two days. And it will not show up anymore and cause you headaches. If I schedule that, it's gonna be active now and then it'll be it'll be it'll deactivate itself. And I'll see them right here, expiring posts. Do that one more time. Let me publish it, and then you'll see that it's So I need to, it's going to get published in about five minutes. But once it's been published and it's going to expire, I'll be able to then see it under the expiring posts in publishing tools. And then either extend the time or force expire it and reuse it. Maybe I do want to open it again later 
I want to share that again in two months with different dates. It's all here under my publishing tools. So we have a lot of different nuances of how we can share on Facebook, but it's still going to be pictures, text, videos, your content. It's still about your idea of what you think someone will want to click on, or buy, or share. That I cannot exactly teach, but we can find plenty of ideas out here. Um, if you go to something like ideas of what to share on Facebook for a bakery. There'll be plenty of articles out there. How to market your bakery, design ideas for bakeries, bakery promotion ideas, 11 great ways for fresh content. So it's much better for me to tell you, look it up. There'll be plenty of ideas out there for you than I can cover here. And not everyone's going to care about bakeries. Who has a bakery to promote in this class? One person. So make sure you check these out. Uh, so whatever yours is, search something like that. Ideas. Facebook, and then your business, those, those sorts of keywords. And then as you try these different sorts of things, you will see in your insights what's working. We're about to take a break, but let me give you something to think about, then we'll take a break. In the old days of Facebook, now this is much older, like five years ago and such, um, the purpose of this like, everyone wanted to get likes on Facebook. I have a business, give me a like on Facebook. I put it on my menu, don't forget to like us on Facebook. I put a little decal on my window, like us on Facebook. The point in the old system of likes was that that's basically the follow. If I follow someone on Twitter, that means I want to see their tweets. If I f follow or circle someone on Google+, basically I want to see their posts on Google+. And the short answer on Facebook was, if I liked something on Facebook, I want to see these posts. Throughout the various years, Facebook, the company itself, has actively changed that whole system. Their own algorithm of their own website, they have changed to make that much less powerful. Now when you like a page, you're not guaranteed at all to see their stuff. As a matter of fact, Facebook is making it more difficult for a business to reach an audience simply by a like. That's so annoying and inconvenient. But guess what? Facebook has a way for you to further reach an audience. And we'll talk about it right after the break, which is promote. Let's take our last break. We'll be back at 8.40. We'll do a short one. We'll be back at 8.45. We'll be back at 8.45. Thank you.